In this episode, we're talking about blended wine. Actually, we're going to rapid fire through about seven subtopics. We'll look at one, what is wine blending? Two, what grapes can be used for blending wine? Three, how common is blending wine? Four, why would you blend wines? Five, is blending wine better? And six, can you put wine in a blender? <laughs> Additionally, we'll look at the correlation between blending wine and our collective lives. Come on, let's go. Welcome to the Asti Wine Consultants Life Series. I'm Pierre Asti. Thanks for joining me. I'm really excited to, to talk about blending. You know, you see, blending is such a key component in the wine industry and it holds a very important life parallel. If we take this seriously, today's lesson can, can have some very powerful implications, particularly in today's in environment. So, what is blended wine? Now, I'm not talking about putting wine in a blender. Actually, a blender can help age wine. Enthusiasts of blender-based decanting put red wine in the blender with the idea that the process ages it five years in 30 seconds. You know, exposing young wines to such air can, can quickly soften the tannins. Now, be careful if you try this. Well, anyway, most wines, particularly in the U.S., are made from a single varietal. You know, a Cab, a Pinot Noir, a Merlot, uh, Chardonnay, Pinot Grigio, Sauvignon Blanc, you know, and, and there's a whole host of others. You know, the list goes on. Uh, blending is when you mix two or more wines together. Usually two or three varietals. Uh, you know, two reds or two whites, but I've seen as many as six or eight blended together. The question a lot of people ask me is, why do you blend wines? Let me show you this way. Pinot Noir is a really popular varietal because it's so versatile. It goes with a lot of foods. Additionally, cabs have historically been extremely popular. However, more recently, people have steered away from the big, gigantic cabs because of all the bold tannins. Uh, they're not as versatile. Now, even though Pinots are versatile, the reality is many wine drinkers are looking for something between a Pinot and a cab. While individual varietals are an option, blends have become increasingly popular. They fit between the Pinots and the Cabs. Now when it comes to the winemaker, by experimenting with multiple varietals, they can construct new wines with unique complexities and satisfying characteristics. They, they custom make wines that really fit our profiles and, and our palates. The trick is we need to get you know, out of our old habits of drinking the same old wines and start experimenting with new and exciting varietals and blends. With blends, you frequently end up with a more complex and interesting wine as it pulls in the characteristics from just a whole a multitude of varietals. The winemaker knows their varietals and knows what they want the wine to taste like so that they can get maybe earthiness from here and, and, and bright fruit here and, and structure from here and, and um, uh, get a little spice over here. You know, sometimes the winemakers blend wines immediately after fermenting while others wait 14, 16, 18 months before they blend the wine. Now, now those who wait generally want to taste the individual variety so that they have a better idea of what the outcome will be. Now to me, waiting is good, but it takes added patience and the desire to focus on the end quality and taste rather than worrying about the money tied up in unbottled inventory. Now drilling down on this a little, a winemaker might, might use a Cabernet as what's called the, the base or the foundation of his or her blend. Uh, they may decide to, to have their base 60% Cabernet because of the, because of the flavors of black, uh, blackberry, black cherry, tobacco, uh, maybe a little bit of vanilla, and, and the structure uh, and the ageability the, uh, of the cab's tannins. They may want to add some complexity and spicy notes, so they'll add 
some Zinfandel. Now there, there might be some Merlot to add, uh, some softness, graphite, herbs, and, and blackberry notes, uh, and, and fine tune it with a little bit of Syrah, and towards the end, add a percentage or two of maybe Movid to add a, a little sensation. <laughs> you know, it's funny, you might be thinking, a percentage or two? What can that do? It's amazing what such a small minority of wine can do for the overall flavor, texture, and sensation of your wine. Now that said, blending is not something that you do with a formula. Like a gourmet chef, the winemaker uses a lot of uh, intuition uh, based on their own personal desire for the taste they're looking for. They can visualize, almost taste, what the, they want the end product to be before they even start. So they put just the right varietals together. It's really an art. So, you know, some may go through uh, maybe a handful of different iterations to get what they're looking for. Other winemakers can go through 60 or 70 blends and iterations of progressive fine tuning before they achieve just the right wine. Again, this takes time and patience. This is something most of us don't have a lot of. Now we in the States have a tendency to, to drink single varietal wines. You know, Cabs, Merlots, Malbecs, Chianti, uh, Chardonnay, Pinot Grigio, Sauvignon Blanc, Pinot Noir, uh, and, and like I said, the whole host of others. Generally, that's the way we drink our wine. In the above average blends, you end up with out of this world flavors, textures, and aromas, especially if you're, you know what you're looking for. As, as the ancient Greek philosopher Aristotle once said, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. You know, the main reason that winemakers produce blends is to make the best wine possible. Blending different grape varietals is useful in accentuating a particular grape's virtues, but winemakers have also learned never to blend an inferior wine with a good wine because the result is usually an inferior wine. If you're not careful, some of the less expensive blends will leave you with a bad taste in your mouth, both literally and figuratively. That's not to say you can't get good, a good blend, a good inexpensive blend. You just you gotta, gotta uh, be vigilant and, and know what you're looking for. Now, as you know, my specialty is the best wines in the world under $15. So trust me, you don't need to, to break the bank to find good blends. Now on that note, if you need any help finding a great option, reach out. I'll be happy to help. Now moving along, here's a little party trivia. What is the most popular wine blend? Now arguably, the most popular blend is champagne and sparkling wine. Champagne generally combines Chardonnay, a white grape, with the red grapes Pinot Noir and or Pinot Meunier. Other sparkling wines also frequently blend a variety of both white and or red grapes. So who makes the best blends? Now, of course, there's a lot of debate on this, but France has been at it the longest and is internationally known for their blends. Now in France, uh, they don't tell you, they don't tell you on the bottle that it's a blend. You just gotta know. You know, especially if you see words on the bottle like Champagne or Bordeaux or, or the Rhone River Valley, including Chateauneuf de Pop. You can find blends pretty much from anywhere in the world. In those parts of the world, it will usually say on the bottle that it's a blend. You may be asking, Pierre, you know, what does all this have to do with life? Our lives today. I'm gonna make this quick, but don't miss the profound nature of what is at play here. If it resonates with you in any way, let me know by hitting subscribe. And don't forget to ring the little bell to turn on notifications. Okay, so here in the US, we've been in the process really since even before our country was founded of creating something new and unique. Something with richness. Something that takes special patience, sacrifice, and in many cases, multiple attempts, iterations. We are and have been committed to creating a blended society with so many different varieties of people together to create just the right blend. 
This dream has echoed through our history from the writings of Jefferson to the speeches of Dr. King. Our aim is to, to blend together those with great character and flavor so that they will fit well together like a great wine. It takes a unique team with a commitment uh, to, to that beautiful vision who are deliberate and know what they're doing to perfectly put together a blend. Personally, I believe we're up for this big job. I think Dr. King and his contemporaries uh, would be pleased to witness the kind of character our nation has, has had in the election of a president whose family has been so greatly discriminated against in a generation or, or two previously. Admittedly, we have a long way to go. To get this right, tedious blending takes patience. It's so sad that today we are so focused on each single varietal that we don't see the beauty of the blend we have created and are in the process of creating. So, which is better, a single varietal or a blend? Hey Posse, thanks so much for investing the time to watch this video. I trust it was helpful to you. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And please consider hitting subscribe. Also, click here to check out our new online shop. We have a great lineup of wine related items that will help you get the most out of your wine experience. Oh, and be sure to check out these other videos. Until next time, cheers.